Okay, so as of me recording this video, it is officially now 33 days until the release of Satisfactory 1.0. I know I'm excited, I know some of you guys are excited, and some of you might not even care. And some of you might even be seeing me after the release. But hello, my name is Bits, and I make content on this channel every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. UK time. But in today's video, I want to show you some tools that you might want to utilize before you even hit new game. But as always, if you enjoy this content, make sure you like, subscribe, and also leave a comment, even if it's just a bloody emoji. So the first thing is, the other day I posted a little community post here on YouTube, and it was just asking you guys, what would you like to see as a priority before the release of Satisfactory, or even could answer people's questions after the release? And a landslide of views asked how to start a fresh save. And there is many different layers to this question because it could involve which biome do I start? How do I go from A to B with A being one factory, B being another factory, and how do I scale appropriately with the game's demands in, re uh, in recipes? And then also on the flip side, that doesn't even involve recipes, is people on how to design factories that can are scalable to your current already built factory but then also on top of that is how do i expand this said production line to scale all the way up until end game and yes it is possible so before we get into this just to let you know there is no wrong or right way of playing satisfactory the only thing that's stopping you from playing it is yourself and the there is multiple ways of playing this game you have chaos builders and chaos builders and you must be wondering why two chaos builders well you have people who build spaghetti and cause chaos and kill doggos and and yeah hey everybody welcome back to let's game it out and then you have people like me or a good friend of mine kibitz or um bl andrew who like to build on the chaos side of things but in clean ways and efficient ways or all that kind of stuff. But then you could also class a chaos builder as someone who just goes fully in on design by making massive starships like construction or massive epic builds like uh, Fluxo or Total Eclipse who's like sat there right in the middle and just observing everything and because I hate that guy. Honestly, I can't hate him. I, I can't, I've gotta, I've gotta hate him. But no, Total's a good friend of mine. I'm just memeing. He knows this. <laughs> but if you're interested in seeing them, fellow content creators, I'll put every single one of their links in the description. So let's get to the topic at hand, how to start a fresh save. So before we even launch the game, there is a couple of tools or a couple of websites or even a piece of software I can show you that could help you through your playthrough. And my personal favorite, which I use every single day, this could be in, uh, just involving just my general content creation, keeping up with calendars, all that kind of stuff, is a program called Obsidian. And it is something I use on a very, very, very daily basis. And what this is, it's a note-taking app. It's something you can just add on your um, PC and something on your phone. And by the way, this is not sponsored, so don't skip this section because you're thinking it's a sponsored segment. It's not. This is a free piece of software you can instantly download and all it does allows you to take notes, you can format and obviously all that kind of stuff. You can make graphs, you can add your links into there. So if, you, if you're if you a person who knows IT and you know what Notion is, all this kind of stuff, it is very similar to that. You can create canvases by creating groups. And this is something where I get involved with when I come to planning out some of my factories. You can also add plugins. So for example, you can see here by ca uh, calendars or data view or outliner, there's so many different stuff in the marketplace. So the software looks something like this. And you can just see it's a very simple little thing. And if I want to start a new one, I can just go over here and I can hit new notes and I can just type something in blah, 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 dash in there. It'll create a bullet point. Uh, if I was to put a hash, uh, bracket, space, bracket, I can make a tick checkbox. So if I type in here going, uh, subscribe to bids, right? You can tick that, job done, move on to your next topic, blah, 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 blah. You can add all of these stuff going down. There's so much things you can do, but my little personal favorite is the canvas view. So let's say, for example, we want to add a new card so we can click add new card we can go into here and we can type uh steel factory right 
So this could be steel beams. And this could be here. You put in how many machines you want. And then in here, you do another one. And then you'll go steel pipes, right? And you type that in. Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. You can put that here. But let's say I want these iron plates to go to this. I know this is not the recipe, so bear with me. So this can then go to here. You can make little eye lines to go to there. That's where I want these items to go to. But let's say this is the steel factory. I could literally just highlight all of these. I can right click. I can create a group. I can call this steel factory, right? That is now my steel factory. I can color this if I want to, and let's call it, let's make it green. So steel factory. Where do I want the steel factory items to go to? Let's say I want to make it go to uh, heavy modular frames. Heavy modular frames. Ignore my spelling if I spell anything wrong. And you might want said item to come out here. So I'll go from, okay, I want items to come from this factory to here. And then on this, I could literally right click, edit label. I want to send 300 pipes from the steel factory to the heavy modular frames. So if you're not a person that likes to do things manually, but you'll like some assistance, and there is a website which leads us to our next tool, which is Satisfactory Tools, which is kind of ironic. And what this is, is let's say you want um, 240 iron plates. I go into here, I type in iron plates, I type that in, and I want 200. That is how I make 200 iron plates easy as that you can also go to this site you can create new tabs because you want a new a new production line let's say with this one this is going to be our steel beam factory so we're going to go into here and this is going to be well encased industrial beam so encased uh industrial that is going to be the final outcome of this said factory we're going to make so we're going to go into here and we're going to type again encased industrial beam we're then going to go okay i need um 120 that's how we get it we need 1920 coal we need 1,920 iron. That goes into 42.667 steel uh, uh, well, foundries and so on and so forth. But then you might be wondering, what about alternate recipes? Does this website give me that as well? Yes, recipes. Here's all the alternate recipes in game. So here's all the base ones on the right hand side. So I recommend keeping these ticked majority of the time. And then here's all your alternate ones on the left hand side. So if I was to select all of these, it's now gonna change my production line to utilize uh, any um, alternate recipes, and it will give you the best alternate recipes for the maximum output. So as you can see, the whole production line has changed. You can move things around if, if things are getting in your way, but it's telling you now, we're gonna be starting with crude oil. We're gonna be making some petroleum cork down here, and then we have 945 iron ore being made with the uh, alternate recipe of petroleum cork in the steel foundry and then so on and so forth. So if this is a website you think you could utilize, because again, you might not want to focus on the mathematics of Satisfactory, definitely use this website. So the next tool I want to show you is something where you can see everything as an overhaul. So you can see how many meters you put down of cable, how many foundations you put down. You can even copy and paste things on this site and it'll, you can also paste it somewhere into a new location on the map. And that is a website called Satisfactory Calculator. And all you need to do is come down here and you just go to the interactive map. It'll load up this page right here. Uh, just be careful, it can be a little temperamental when it comes to loading things. Obviously, if your f f uh, save file is quite substantial and large, uh, you can actually <laughs> freeze this website, which unfortunately my, pay my, my save does. And I know some other creators uh, saved us as well. The only downside is, yes, you can have ads on here, which is it, it's, it's not a bloody bad thing at the end of the day. So all we need to do is when we're in here, is this will lead us to something where you guys, where do I find your save? Well, all you need to do is just hit, hit the Windows key and press R. That will take you to this run page. Type in local app data. Yeah, you, you can get this faster if you wanted to by doing other things, but this is how I do it, right? So local app data percentage. Type that in, scroll down, look for factory game, which is in the Fs, uh, in the Fs bits. Where is it? Factory game, save games, and then save games here, and then go to your Steam profile ID, right? And then in here, all you need to do is grab your save. Let's say we'll bring in season two. You drag that over here into this little box here. Light up green and just drop it. Then it will start loading. So it might freeze sometimes, you might have to refresh it. Uh, but once this is done, it will show everything that is in your save. You can see this is a top-down view 
of my water plant from season two where all my bottled waters are being created and you can kind of scroll in here and you can zoom in pretty far and you can even see your your flow rate what's in your storages and you can see every little piece of foundation your machines like here's my freight platforms and whatnot it even colors them to the color of what you're using in game as well and then here's all the signals on the railway tracks and all that kind of stuff and if i wanted to I could literally go over here to the left hand side. I can click this little lasso tool. I can then just circle this whole area here and I can just hit delete. And it's gonna tell me everything that it's gonna delete right here. I can then click delete selected items or I can click this update selected buildings to a color slot, position, move selected item position, uh, make it into a, a, a mega print uh, and whatnot, right? So I can then delete selected items, submit. It's now gonna give me this pop-up. You have selected 22,461 items. Do you want a doggy bag with your mask dismantling? So what do you mean by a doggy bag? And what this is gonna do, you'll get a nice little crate next to you so i'm gonna click yes and then it's gonna delete everything and then after a little bit you can see we've now got a big gaping hole in my water bottling facility and yes when i load into game it is going to give me a doggy bag and once you've amended your uh, saving here to maybe you've wanted to delete something or move something you literally click the download save game here you then click save changes and then once it's downloading, it will have a underscore at the end with calculator. You literally drag that or copy it, go back to your save file, paste it. It is then inside your save folder. Then head into the game, just click load, season two YouTube, which it is, and there's the calculator save. So I'm gonna click that, I'm gonna click load. And then when the game loads back up, I jump in and then I turn around and then look at that. <laughs> I can go into here then and I've got all of these to worry about after I've deleted everything. That's only if you accepted that you wanted a doggy bag, but you can see I've got canisters, 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 water bottles, canisters, and whatnot, but yeah. And then you can see what's happened to the factory and my water bottling facility. But all I need to do is if I want to, I can just go back to the other save and you can clearly see that my highway, my train has gone, all the canisters where we had all the trucks gone, the whole water bottling plant has gone and the only thing that's left is near enough the train station. So just a little reminder, the satisfactory tools where it shows you the canvas and the recipes and everything might not be updated as of day one for satisfactory 1.0 and it might not be updated for the satisfactory calculator as well. And the next thing is, is the mod manager. And not a lot of people, I and well, to be honest, I get a lot of people asking how to install mods. And all you need to do is just download this. You go up in the top right hand corner and you, it'll say download. Obviously, I've already got it installed. You'll literally click download, install. It will automatically find your satisfactory save. Well, installation. Once installed, it looks like this. And all you need to do, let's say I'm going to come down here and I want to look at what's this one called here? Deep mining. I click on it. I could have a look what this mod has done. They put like deep mining mark two tier five. They've added some milestones to the actual um, uh, tiers here, the different phases and whatnot. And you can see things a little bit different. And if I want this, I click this little download button here or I click down here to install the mod. And then once you've done that, you literally go over to your show, click installed mods, and you can see the mods I have installed, which is Sky UI, which allows me to change the day and night cycle so I can make sure I've got constant daylight during the, during the playthrough and whatnot. Or if I want to get certain screenshots for the thumbnails and all that stuff. Then I have Satisfactory Plus, which we don't talk about because that thing is a chaotic little, yeah, and we'll come back to that after 1.0. The additional 500 slots and then Pack Utility. And Pack Utility allows me to do exclamation mark fly or uh, which is what I use to use the gliding shots and whatnot. I could use Fix-It Cam, but I'd, I just prefer the static kind of movement. It also allows you to spawn in items. And as you know, you might have seen it in a couple of my videos where you might have seen like a little pop-up that says uh, give 200 copper. And obviously, as you know, or if you don't know, I record, well, I don't record, I pre-build all my uh, Let's Plays on stream and then I bring it off, off to then start recording. And then sometimes when I pre-load a save, I'm like, damn, I need to get this. And I might be on the other side of the world or whatnot. And I'll just give myself the items to help me progress through that recording because I've already done it on the live stream. So there's no point in doing it twice to just waste time. 
And there is literally the four tools that I could recommend. There's going to be many, many more out there, like there's some blueprint websites and whatnot. Um, but they're the four that I recommend to people. The only one I utilize in that is obviously the mod loader. Uh, I do use uh, Pack Utility and Sky UI. Um, and going forward in Satisfactory 1.0, when we officially start a playthrough, they're the only two mods I will have. Obviously, this mod loader will need to update to 1.0 and usually it gets done pretty quick and then that is it they are four essential tools i recommend before even starting your game to look at if it's something you want to make your life easier this could be in regards to just placing notes down an all-in-one note integration system we can add your images your links and whatnot and your charts and your calendars and everything then you've got the satisfactory tools which allows you to do use all the chart stuff and it automatically updates for you and gives you the answer literally by the click of a button and then you have the satisfactory calculator which allows you to then just make amends uh, and make amendments to your current save file and delete something if you don't want to do it and move it somewhere on the map and all that kind of stuff and then of course the satisfactory mods which is the the modding community behind this game is absolutely insane and uh there's some very good mods out there and i'm looking forward to playing some um, game changing mods after 1.0 but that is going to be it for this video i think I've, it's gone on way too long enough and uh hopefully you've enjoyed it so thank you so much for watching and as always keep bloody smiling and i'll see you in another video